We all know that investment fees can significantly reduce your wealth as you're saving for retirement, but how do they affect you once you retire and you start spending down all your investments? Well, that's the question we're going to tackle in today's video. Hey everybody, my name is Rob Berger. This is the Financial Freedom Show where we talk about investing, retirement, you know, and financial freedom. If those topics are of interest to you, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I also send out a newsletter every Sunday morning. You can sign up for that with the link below this video. So I got an email from a viewer and he kind of made this point. He said, look, I kind of, I figured out investment fees and how they affect wealth when I'm saving for retirement, but I'm, I'm having trouble finding a good tool to help me model the impact of investment fees once I retire and start spending down all my hard earned money. So here's what we're gonna do uh, in today's video. First, I'm gonna show you Empower, used to be called Personal Capital, which can help you model your, the effect of investment fees while you're saving for retirement. But then to the viewer's uh, question, I'm gonna show you three different tools you can use to model the effects of investment fees once you retire. And then I'm gonna show you a resource I put together where if you're wanting help with your investments, whether you're, you're retired or not, but you really don't like the idea of, of paying a percentage of your wealth every year to an investment advisor, and I don't know who would wanna do that. Well, I've got some flat fee or fixed fee uh, investment advisors that I'll show you at the end. So let's dive right in. I'm going to start with Empower. It used to be called Personal Capital. I've talked about this tool many times. And um, so this is a demo account, but you would link your own, uh, you know, 401ks and 403bs and IRAs and brokerage accounts here. And then once you did that for the fee an analysis, you'd come right here to Retirement Fee Analyzer. And uh, the one thing you want to make sure is that you've selected all of the accounts that you've linked to Empower that you want to analyze. What I've noticed is it, it, if you have accounts that are designated as retirement accounts and some that are not, when you first open the fee analyzer, it will only check the ones that are marked for retirement. Uh, at least that's the way it was in the past. Obviously, you can choose which accounts you want to include. I'm just including all three of them here. And um, you have to look at the assumptions. They're very important. Uh, you can set how much you're contributing each year. Uh, if there's an employer match, you have to make an assumption on growth. Right now, it's just set to 7.4. I'll leave that where it is. And then here's where you can set, for example, a 1% uh, investment advisor fee if you're paying that. Uh, and uh, what it will do, now in this case, I've got it set to, I'm only, I'm 66 years old, I'm retiring at 67. Here's how the tool works. It will show you the effects of investment fees up until the point you've set for your retirement, which you can do in, in profile or settings. Let's take a quick look. It might be profile. Uh, yeah, I've just made up a name. And if you edit, it's interesting. So it's your name would go here. I don't know why I picked Belinda as my last name. And I wasn't born in 1957, but this is just a demo account. You'll notice it says nothing about when you're gonna retire. But if you edit it, you'll see you've got a retirement age. So like if I change this to 80, I'm gonna retire at 80. Uh, and then I go back to the retirement fee analyzer, you'll see here, see it's now 80, it's set to 80. And, and, and my current age in the system is 66. And so obviously that's a, a longer period of time for my investments to grow, but also for my fees to add up. Uh, so that's how that works. And you can see the total fees are you know a lot of money, 400 grand. Uh, so, but the point is, this only takes you up to retirement. It doesn't analyze the effect of fees when you actually retire and start spending down your money. Well, no worries. We've got three tools we're going to look at. The first is, uh, uh, the first two are free. Well, actually, the first one is free. Uh, uh, and the second one is not, but we'll look at that in a second. So the first free one, ficalc.app, very easy tool to use. So we've got, we'll just leave the, the length of retirement at 30 years, billion dollar portfolio. We're gonna effectively follow the 4% rule. So I've got $40,000 the first year spend, and I've checked this box here, which adjusts it for inflation. Where you can set the fee is here in your portfolio details. Again, I just click on this section here. And this is the standard that you see when you first load the app. 80% equities, 15% bonds, 5% cash. And the annual fees are basically set as if you're just using an index fund. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this to 75. I'm gonna set the fees at one. So I'm kind of assuming index funds, which are as close, you know, effectively they're free, uh, but um, a 1% sort of assets under management fee. 
We'll set bonds at 25% with a fee of 1%, and we'll just put cash at zero for our purposes right now. And uh, so we've sort of built in this 1% fee. And if we do that and we save this, we can see we have a 90, or we'll call it a 91% success rate. So what does that mean for this tool? Well, it's gone all the way back and looked at hypothetical retirements, 30-year retirements beginning in 1871, uh, and used historical data and just sort of loop through 30-year retirements and run all the calculations. And so the colors, if it's blue, it means after 30 years, you had a truckload of money left over. We can actually look at one. We'll just pick 1877. This is on an inflation adjusted basis. You started with a million. After 30 years, you had 4.25 million. So that's, bl that's blue. Uh, uh, the, just if it's just black, then sort of an average um, amount of money. Yellow means you, you didn't run out of money, but you were getting close. You had less than 35% of your initial portfolio. Let's pick oh, 1970. Yeah, see? Uh, less than 30%, you were down to 140 grand on an inflation adjusted basis. And um, red, red means you ran out of money. Yikes, so that's not good. So here's the thing I wanna show you. Uh, let's keep this in mind, 91%, right? If we go back and take the fees out, or we can even just put in 0. 0.04, I guess, for like the cost of an, an index fund or something, that's fine. Um, so our, our success, our chance of success, again, it's based on historical data, but it went from 91 to, we'll call it 97%. That's a pretty significant drop, or, or I mean increase. Still some, some bad years, certainly the mid to late 60s are bad, pretty much no matter how you, what, no, just about any assumption you use, but, but it's clearly a much better outcome. One way to think of this, if you're gonna use this tool is to say, well, I actually might be okay with a 91% success rate. Uh, I don't view that, by the way, as a 9% failure rate. I view that more as a 9% chance I'll have to change my plan. Because I don't think any of us are really going to let ourselves just completely run out of money. We're going to make changes. But in any event, one way to look at this is, is to say, well, if I'm okay with the 91% the, the success rate we saw when we had uh, a 1% fee, how much more could I spend in year one and then adjust that for inflation going forward? and still have a 91% chance of success. Well, let's let's figure that out. We'll go to 41,000. How are we doing? Well, it brought us down not much. Okay. How about 42,000? Well, we're at 93 and a half. All right. 43,000? Still didn't change it at all. 44? Oh, well, we're getting closer. 91.8. Well, there we are. So $45,000. That's more than a 10% increase with the same chance of success. That... that I want to stress, please don't look at what I just did as some sort of scientific, you know, uh, uh, study. But I do think, at least from an, sort of orders of magnitude, it shows you just how much a 1% fee uh, can affect how much you can spend in retirement if you want to try to spend more, or your chance of success if you just want to keep your spending the same. It's pretty significant. So that's the first tool I want to show you. Let's get to the second tool. Um, it's called Portfolio Visualizer. Now, one thing I have to say is the, the, the feature I'm going to show you, which is in the uh, back testing the asset allocation, this is available for free. But you see this here, this fee structure that we're going to use is only available with a paid subscription. Now, I happen to have a paid subscription, uh, and I guess they start at $19 a month. So you can decide if it's worth it for you, but I'll show you this. Um, I actually, I will tell you, it, I don't think the fee is worth it for what I'm going to show you, and I'll explain why in a minute. Let's assume again a million dollar portfolio. We're going to do, we're going to withdraw a fixed amount. We'll again start with the same forty thousand, and we're going to adjust it for inflation annually. And and so here we want fees. Do we want to? When it says shared fee structure, fee structure, what it means is this: I'm going to put two portfolios in here. Uh, do they both have the same fee structure? Well, I'm going to say no because I want to compare one with a 1% AUM fee, that'll be, that'll be portfolio one, and then one without it. And so we can actually give these names, we'll customize it, we'll call this the 1% portfolio, and we'll call this the free portfolio. So what are we gonna do for these portfolios? Well, I just wanna keep them the same, so I think what I'll just do is do the Bogleheads three fund portfolio, that's fine. The point here is just to compare the two. So there they are. Oh, look, they've changed the name. Free, I'm gonna change it back. 1% and 
I've got it right there. I think I've got everything right. Let's analyze this portfolio. And first, first thing to note, this is the data, 1987 to 2023. So what's that, 35, 36 years? Uh, the numbers are going to shock you. <laughs> I'll just tell you that right now. So Portfolio 1, after 36 years, has 4,100,000 left. And that was with a 1% fee. Free, 7.3, almost $7.4 million. So that 1% fee cost us, you know, th over, th over $3 million, which I personally think is a lot of money. All right. So the question then becomes, it, okay, is this calculator broken? Is that, is that really the number? That doesn't seem possible. It turns out it is, but this gets me back to why I wouldn't pay for Portfolio Visualizer for this purpose. We are looking at one time series from January 87 to the current time. That's it. It's, it. So the problem with that is, from 1987 to today, as you saw, even with a 1% fee, you know, retirees did very well. Uh, up, up until recently, inflation was relatively low, and there were certainly bad periods in the stock market during, during this past 36 years, but overall, stock market has done really, really well. And so uh, it shows a huge difference in the number because of the 1% AUM fee. Now, that's, a, I think, a relevant data point but if we were to, if we could run the same numbers, say from 1966 forward 33 years, the number would be much, 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 much smaller because the portfolio balance would be going down the whole time. That would reduce the, the absolute dollar amount of that 1% fee because it's based on the, the portfolio value. And so I think Portfolio Visualizer does a great job of showing you the possible impact of a 1% fee. But you shouldn't take from this, oh, oh my goodness, a 1% fee means I lose three, over $3 million if my retirement is 36 years. What you're actually going to lose, you'll definitely lose something, no doubt about that, but it will depend on how the, the market actually performs. And, and so just bear that in mind. So I, I'm not sure I would pay for Portfolio Visualizer for this analysis, but that's of course up to you and I wanted to show it to you. All right, the final one I wanna show you today is Projection Lab. We've talked about Projection Lab before, and I'll leave a link to this below the video. Uh, and I'll actually link, if you want to try this out, I've talked to Kyle, um, the, um, the who developed this, and I am an, he is an advertiser, so he, I do have an affiliate relationship with him, which means if you sign up through my link, I will get a commission. Uh, but it doesn't increase your cost. In fact, he, uh, I've got a, a coupon code, you'll get a 10% discount. So I'll put that in the, in the, in the um, show notes uh, below the video, if it's something you want to try out. Uh, so in any event, what I did here was just, a, I did a $100,000 portfolio. Uh, and the the person, this again, this is just a demo a account, but the person is 65, sort of assuming a 30 year retirement. And I started with a no fee plan. And, uh, you know, basically here it is, the, you know, you can see this is on an inflation adjusted basis. Um, Oh no, I'm sorry, this is actual currency. We can go to today's currency that'll give us inflation adjusted, but we'll actually stick with actual currency. And it shows, uh, and let me make sure I've got this set correctly. Yeah, so I'm using a withdrawal strategy here. So let me just show you what I did. This link here allows you to set uh, a withdrawal strategy. There are a number of them, as you can see here, um, including things like Guyton Klinger, and uh, I really like what he's done here, but I'm just sticking with the initial percentage 4% adjusted for inflation. When you when you activate this and pick a withdrawal strategy, it basically ignores any of the expenses and income you've, you, you've, you've put down here, uh, or certainly the expenses. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind, but that's fine for our purposes. And it shows that, you know, on an, on an actual currency basis, after, uh, after 30 years, you end up with just over a million dollars. Now, the thing to understand about this, uh, what you're seeing here is, uh, this is based on an assumed uh, return and inflation. And the assumptions I made, you probably can't see it down here, but basically an 8.5% return assumption. Assumption 6% price return, 2.5% dividends. So that's important to understand. Uh, we'll look at a Monte Carlo analysis, uh, analysis of this in a minute. But what I want to show you is, again, that's we end up with $1,071,000, basically using the 4% rule. Now, you can compare plans. So I set up a, what I call 1% fee plan. How did I do that? Well, 
If you go into the accounts here, and I just have one in this case, but it's a 401k, $100,000. You can see here fees right here. And I just put in a 1% of balance yearly fee. There are other ways to do it, but that's how I set it up here. And when we do that, remember we had a million 71 in the old, in the no fee plan. Well, this one, after 30 years, we end up, you can actually see it up here, 649,000. So a very you know significant difference uh, between the two plans. Now, you can run a Monte Carlo analysis of this. He calls it a simulation, which is really what it is. And you do that here where it says chance of success. So if we click that, we're still in the 1% fee plan. We click chance of success. Now, there are a number of different settings that, that you can change here. I'm, I'm just gonna leave them the standard settings. The point here really isn't to, to dive into Monte Carlo analysis as much as it is just to compare the two plans. So remember, this is the 1% fee plan. We're going to run the analysis, uh, not not dissimilar to what we've saw before with uh, FI, FI Calc, but it's 91.5% chance of, of uh, success, all right? And again, you can dive into all these details here. Uh, you can go through year by year and so on. This uses this particular one uses historical data. Now, if we go to the, the no-fee plan, remember, 91.5%, no-fee plan, almost 98%. And again, we could then adjust this plan. Like for example, we could come down here and say, all right, well, what if we did 4.5 and we're willing to get to 91% um, and we run it again, that takes us down to 88.9. So we'd have to adjust it a little bit. Maybe it's 4.4. The point is you'll with no fees, you'll either have a greater chance of success with your current plan or for the same uh, success rate that the 1% fee plan gives you you could spend more money of some amount. So I've kind of walked through this. There are, those are three tools. You could use a tool like New Retirement. They don't actually have a separate field to put an AUM fee. The way you could model it, I think this is probably good enough, is to simply reduce your return assumptions by the amount of the, the, the uh, AUM fee, the percentage fee that you're paying. And you could run it in New Retirement as well. I think the key takeaway is that the industry standard 1% fee, it wrecks your wealth when you're saving uh, for retirement. No, no question about that. But once you enter retirement, it also has a significant impact on how much you can spend. It's either gonna reduce the amount you can spend, or if you wanna keep the amount the same, it's gonna decrease your chance of success. And as we've seen, it's pretty significant. I mean, it can easily reduce your spending by 10% or more, in year one. And so that gets us to sort of the final uh, point for the video today. And that is, you're thinking, okay, that's great, Rob. I get that 1% is no good, but I want some help. How do I get help if I don't want to spend 1%? Well, there are a couple of options. There are certainly uh, options available that do charge an AUM fee, but it's much, much lower. Vanguard is one example. They, they charge, uh, I think, 0.3%. So significantly less than the industry standard 1%. But I also, I keep a list of financial advisors, I'll leave a link to this below the video, uh, uh, who charge like a flat fee or low cost fee. I use, I personally use Mark Zorro uh, and talk to him once a year. But, you know, Rick Ferry is a good friend of mine. I met Jack at um, Bogleheads. I'm no, I was on a panel with John at the Bogleheads. So these are all individuals, uh, some I know, some I don't. One thing I'll say is don't take any of these as a personal recommendation from me. You should treat all of these individuals, uh, you know, skeptically, if, you know, because it's your money, it's your retirement. You know, find out about them, do some research, understand how they work, how they think, you know, before you make a decision. Do your, do your due diligence. That's really, really important. I will say too that I'd like to add more advisors to my list. So if you know of advisors, maybe you've used someone who charges a flat fee or maybe a really, really low uh, AUM fee that you think is worth listing here, uh, you know, please let me know. Send me an email, leave it in the comments to this video. I'd be happy to add as many uh, low cost uh, uh, financial advisors as I can. I, I will say this, I think it's more than just about low, a low cost in terms of the advisor's cost. It's also about how they think about investing. I want to work with an advisor if I were going to if I weren't going to manage my own investments, who pretty much uh, uh, adopts a low cost index fund approach to investing. So, the fee matters a lot, but also their approach 
to investing matters uh, as well. But if you know of a good advisor that you think I should consider and add to the page, please let me know. Well, there you go. That, those are some tools you can check out if you sort of want to model how investment fees affect you once you're in retirement. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, leave them below the video in the comments. I'll do my best to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.